Hello friends, welcome to Rajesh Data Engineering. In this video, I am going to talk about one of the interview question, that is compression method. In any big data projects, choosing the right file format would improve the performance. There are many big data file formats available in the markets such as Parquet, Avro, ORC, JSON, CSV. These are the commonly used file formats in big data projects. Each and every file format supports unique use cases. It means one particular file format is not suitable for all use cases. We have to understand our use case. Maybe it would be write heavy or read heavy operations. Based on that, we have to go with either Parquet or Avro. And each and every file format has its unique features and pros and cons. So not only file format, while working with big data projects, choosing the right compression method will also either hit or boost the performance. So we need to give more attention to compression method also. So there are many compression methods available in the market such as Snappy, Gzip, Yelso, LCO. Now these are the different compression methods available. I am going to talk about Snappy and Gzip in this uh, video. You know these are the two commonly used file format across most of the big data projects. And each and every you know these two compression methods has its unique features and pros and cons. And each compression method is suitable for specific use cases. So I'm going to cover the differences and also the suitable use cases for these two compression uh, methods. The first one, the first difference between Snappy and GCP is Snappy consumes low CPU utilization, which means when we are performing Snappy compression, it won't occupy more CPU resources which means you know, other rest of the other processes can get some resources for their computation which that is advantage of snappy coming to gcp while performing gcp, GCP uh, compression it will consume more cpu which means it will occupy more resources of the server which means other processes might be affected to get some resources so this is not good the second difference is snappy has low compression rate whereas gzip has high compression rate what does it mean let's say we are having one gigabytes one gb file we want to compress that one so if you are going to apply snappy compression maybe it would produce let's say it is producing 500 megabytes from 1 gb to 500 megabytes but whereas when we go with gzip even it can uh, compress even better like for example 1 gb to 200 megabytes so Snappy has low compression rate where GCP has high compression rate. So at the end of the compression, Snappy compress, compressed file will, will occupy more space in the disk and GCP, GCP compressed files will occupy less uh, space in the disk. So in this point, GCP uh, scores better than Snappy. And the third difference is splittable. Snappy is a splittable format whereas GCP is not splittable format. In any big data parallel processing architecture, you know, nowadays uh, in the big data uh, architecture, we are going with massively parallel processing, which means uh, it's a distributed and also parallel processing. So the parallel processing is very important to achieve uh, uh, heavy calculation in short duration. So for that, the file format should be splittable. Then only multiple cores can access the same file uh, for uh, quick computation. So in that case, Snappy is splittable. So we can improve the calculation and coming to gzip it is not splittable so only one core from a server can access the file at a time so it will hit the uh, performance of any calculation so in this particular point snappy scores better than gzip you know these are the main three differences uh, uh, snappy is uh, better in terms of cpu utilization and splittable gzip is better in terms of high compression rate these are the basic differences between snappy and gzip now uh, let me give you some uh, use cases uh, let's say a hot layer that is suitable for snappy what does it mean for example uh, you are compressing some data that will be accessed frequently by your application 
then that is called hot layer you are going to access the data multiple times again and again then that is called hot layer then in that case you know we can go with snappy because when we are accessing the data again and again multiple times you know each and every time it is going to consume less cpu which means rest of the other processes running on the same server you know will get uh, some resources for their calculation so that is the reason but if you are going with uh, gzip in hot layer what happens you know the gzip compression itself will take will occupy more uh, uh, cpu memory you know resources of the server then other process will be affected so for hot layer it's better to go with snappy not uh, with gzip and cold layer for example you know if you are not going to access some um, uh, data frequently you know it is mainly for storage purpose then we can go with cold layer we don't need to go with snappy and the next use case uh, would be compute intensive or storage intensive so in snappy as i told earlier the data is splittable which means using parallel processing we can achieve uh, any calculation very quickly so that's the reason you know if our use case is uh, more computive uh, compute intensive then it's always better to go with a splittable format that is snappy or otherwise uh, if our use case is uh, more storage intensive for example for auditing purpose you now we have to maintain our historical you know 15 years uh, back old data we have to store in some layer then we can go with gzip because this is going to um, uh, give high compression rate which means um, you know we the compressed file will occupy only less amount of uh, disk space so we don't need to spend more money for uh, disk storage but if you are going with uh, snappy for this use case what happens snappy Snappy will create a bulky or bigger size uh, compressed files. So we have to pay more for storage disk. So these are the differences and also I have uh, covered in you know, a couple of um, use cases where we can go with Snappy and Gzip. Now let us uh, get uh, started with demo. This is my Databricks environment. Here I have created one simple uh, notebook to demonstrate uh, the difference between uh, Snappy and Gzip. Uh, here, you know, first I'm going to create uh, one data frame by reading one CSV file from my DBFS uh, file system. Let me execute this one. Here you can see, you know, there is uh, some data related to baby names uh, data. Okay. Now, I want to write this data in the format of uh, Snappy and also in the format of Gzip, you know, just for demo. So, what is the syntax format? While writing any data frame, we can give option compression. Okay, this is the keyword compression and within the parameter value, you can give snappy gzip, you know, whichever uh, compression method you want to use in your application, you can give that. For example, here I am giving compression uh, rate snappy. By default, it would be snappy for parquet file in Spark. We don't need to mention also. But here I am giving syntax how we can use that explicitly. Okay, so this data frame, you know, whatever we have created in the previous step, the data frame will be returned to DBFS file system under folder snappy parquet in the format of uh, snappy compression method. So let me execute this one. It's completed now. So uh, in the same location, now let me list down all the files. See here, it has created three supporting files and this is our original partition file. Okay, here you can see, you know, this is snappy compressed file format. Okay, this is the file uh, name and the compression is snappy and the file format is parquet because above I have written in the parquet file format. And let us note down the size of this uh, file. So here it is 153 kilobytes. That is the size of this file. So let me proceed and in the next step, I am going to write the same uh, a data frame in same parquet format but this time i'm going to give compression gzip this is the syntax we have to give dot option compression is the keyword we need to give gzip let me execute this one execution is completed let me list down see here now from gzip parquet folder i'm listing down here you can see, you know, there are three supporting files. This is the actual data file. So here you can see partition file. This is a partition file. Here you can uh, see gzip compression. This is a gzip compression and parquet file format. And here you can see, you know, the size of the file is 119 kilobytes. Earlier for snappy, we have seen 150 something, 153 kilobytes. And for gzip, it is just 
120 or 119 kilobytes so you can see big difference okay maybe this file is in kilobytes but in the real time projects we might have uh, we might receive files in uh, gb or uh, tb even petabytes also so during that time you know even this difference will be very bigger I hope you understood uh, the different uh, compression methods and what is the difference between uh, Snappy and Parquet and also how to use in your uh, big data projects. If you like this content, please like and comment this video. Please subscribe this channel and don't forget to click on the bell button. Thank you.